we asked the question, what's, you asked the question, why did the Niners score only 13 points? I responded on Twitter. I said, one, Kyle, two, Jimmy, the two culprits. So let's start with Kyle, number one. I think what we're seeing with this offense is the running game hasn't been effective. They brought in Christian McCaffrey. He's averaging 4.2 yards per carry. The run game's not working so well. Let's talk about the passing game, though. All these weapons, all these receivers, and 13 points. So I think what we see is it's a one-read offense. You're used to Bill Walsh and Joe Montana where he would drop back and there was a 1-2-3 ABC progression that Bill Walsh trusted Joe Montana to go through. quickly. Insisted. Ins- insisted. Insisted. On, in rhythm. So if the first guy wasn't open, it's okay. The second guy would be, or the third guy would be open. And that was the expectation. Kyle doesn't really coach that way. There's a progression. But from all reports, he is trying to guess the coverage and telling the quarterback where to throw. And he wants the quarterback to throw to the primary receiver. So you, the rhythm of the offense is when Kyle's right. When he's guessing correctly. And there's, you know, there's motions, there's shifts. And he's, he's trying to figure out if it's zone, I want to do this. If it's man, I want to do this. I'll give the, the quarterback two plays. And you'll see Jimmy sometimes call can, can, can. I'm going to the second play. But Kyle's basically saying, I'm going to guess right. And I'm going to make sure that the number one guy is open. And that's and we're going to win. If he's wrong, that's when you start seeing like the whole like chaos. All of a sudden, Jimmy's patting his feet and patting the ball. And it's, it's looking like he's going from one to, oh my God, where's two? Two doesn't expect to get, two's not looking for the ball. Hey, two, I'll be checked down to three. And that's the Niners offense when Kyle Shanahan isn't right. It's like everyone's condition, well, the ball's going to him. Oh, this is an IU play? Okay, the ball's going to IU. Oh, this is a Kittle play? Okay, the ball's going to Kittle. As opposed to 30 years ago, how the Niners did it then. I think that's part of the problem with this offense. So I want to expand on what you're saying. So if Kittle is not the primary receiver, I'm just using Kittle as an example. It could be any of them. They might not run their route as hard and as precisely because they're not going to get the ball. Is that what you you, you, you – it's a hypothesis. Yes, and a lot of like film guys have been pointing out this year like, hey, look at Debo. This is a terrible route. He's not getting the ball, but he's not running particularly hard. And it seems like you're seeing that – more than you should from a good offense. The, the routes by the guys that aren't the primary receiver are not uh, as good as they should be. I'm not going to say they're lazy. I mean, they're not as good as they should be. They're not as crisp as they should be. And that, to me, is syst- systemic of an offense. A bunch of players know, you know, the tendency. Oh, it's not going to me on this play. Because, because Kyle is so uh, insistent. I have a, a little clip I want to read to you. This is from a an article that Mike Silver wrote for the NFL Network, NFL.com, when the Niners were in the Super Bowl, okay? This is, I just want to read this to you. This is, this is the Niners' offense. He goes, this is Rich Scangarello said this. He just got fired by Kentucky. But at the time, he was a Niners quarterback coach. He says, Kyle, he's talking about season finale 2018. Nick, Nick Mullins is the quarterback. They're playing the Rams. Kyle calls a play, and Nick Mullins throws it to the field instead of the boundary. And he gets a completion, but it's not where Kyle wanted it to go. Nick's read wasn't bad. It just wasn't what Kyle wanted on that play. And he MFs me on the headset big time. He goes, I'm going to call it again, and he better throw it there. And so he calls it a series later, and cornerback Akib Talib is playing way off, and Kyle can't tell. And so Nick throws it to the field again, not where Kyle wants it, and Kyle comes unglued on me on the headset. Who the hell is coaching this guy? What the dot, dot, dot? He's just going crazy. What Kyle didn't realize is Tlaib was playing way off, coverage was kicked that way, and it would have been a pick if Nick had thrown it where Kyle wanted to. And Nick knew that, and he just did what he thought was right, and Kyle was going off on the headset, on the headset. but everyone who watched the play knew he was wrong, but no one said anything. All of a sudden, about 10 minutes later, you hear Mike McDaniel chirp in on the headset, hey guys, wasn't that cloud on the boundary a good decision? And it was crickets, crickets. Now, Kyle wouldn't even remember that conversation. In the heat of the game, he acts out because it's his way of getting his emotions out when he's calling plays so he can move on. The next day, it's like it never happened. That's Kyle. Whoa. Whoa. You could get a completion, and he's like, that's not where I wanted the ball to go. Was that what Bill Walsh was like? I I don't know know the answer. You know, that's a really good question. I wish I had the answer, but I can tell you, his coaches who could listen in on the headsets said that Bill was a bitcher and a moaner and complained all the time. Okay. And in, I, even in one case, I, Iggy, I don't know if I said it on the air, but this really did happen. 
I guess there was a pick, and and they looked terrible. And he said into the headsets, "What am I going to tell the media?" And I know that for a fact. So Bill, blame your quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> so they're they all are nuts on the headsets. A coach of his told me, he said, "What am I going to tell the media on the headsets?" Like the media mattered at that moment. That's so funny. Yeah, but I, so like for example, Jimmy Garoppolo will throw some of these interceptions where the guy's right in front of him. Or it's like, how did you? There's so many interceptions. Like how? Not this year. How did you throw that? You were looking right at him. If you had eyes in your brain, in your head, you would never have thrown that pass. Well, maybe he's got so much pressure from his head coach to throw the ball where he's supposed to throw the ball. You get plays like that where it's like, dude, are you a robot? Did you not see that? I mean, that doesn't necessarily absolve Jimmy Garoppolo of, brain, of a brain. I mean, of blame because he ha- he has the power to make his own decisions. But Kyle must put a lot of pressure. Well, but it also means if, if like Nick Mullins, he sees that the call is wrong. Now he has, he has a, a conflict. Yes. Do I do what the coach wants or do I do what's right? And that could really screw you up on a play. Well, either way leads to you getting benched, right? If I do what the coach wants, I get intercepted. He's not going to take the blame. I'll get benched. If I do what he doesn't want, he'll bench me for insubordination. <laughs> Seems like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. It's it it's it's very tough. Now, I there was another thing you said that I would like you to follow up on. You've told me that you think Kyle only uses half the field with Jimmy. What do you yeah. mean by that? I feel like Kyle tells him, "Look, I want you to read the right side of the field." I, they, here, I, you know, I, there'll be most of the time you have five el- five eligible receivers, three on one side, two on another. Uh, he'll tell you, "I want you to read one side of the field. This will be your primary receiver." Um, so for example, they were at the two yard line in this game against the saints and they had three guys on one side, two on the other. And it looked like there were four defenders on one side and two on the other. And Kyle told him to go to the right side. I don't know why he completed a one yard pass to Jawan Jennings, a one yard pass. didn't even get into the end zone on the other side. Christian McCaffrey was wide open uncovered. So it's like, is that Jimmy's fault or is that Kyle's fault? Was Kyle in the headset saying, uh, primary is Juwan. I want you reading the right side of the field. Okay, well, then you can't blame Jimmy Garoppolo when Christian McCaffrey is just standing in the end zone like this, trying to get the ball. Um, But someone needs to be blamed for that. Right, right. Again, I'm going to intercede for a moment. We are not here to dump on the Niners. We are analyzing things. Um, We praise them for having pulled themselves up, discovered their identity, and becoming a force in the NFC. And they weren't a few weeks ago. They're a force in the NFC. But it's not only fair, it's important to discuss their offense because it's the weak link now. And they're playing not great teams. They're playing good teams. And they're going to need to score more than 13 points against good teams. Right. And, you know, they were down. They lost to the Falcons. Their season was looking bad. And when you pull back and say, how do the Niners turn their season around? It wasn't the Christian McCaffrey trade. It was the fact that the defense hasn't given up a point after halftime in a month. Wow. In four straight games, they haven't given up a point after halftime. That's how they turned their season around with their defense, and we're still waiting for the offense to get there because the defense is playing like the 1985 Bears, although not against the one good offense they face. This is a very interesting week because this is a very good offense. It's another test for the defense. Well, we'll get to that in a bit. Yes. Uh, okay, one more thing, and then we'll take some questions. So we're, we've talked about Kyle's responsibility for the offenses uh, underperforming.